Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this week's episode of A Noor The Light. Our new time slot is still growing on us, but we continue to offer the best of Islam in South Africa to you, our loyal viewers. We're kicking off this week's episode in the friendly city of Port Elizabeth, where we spend some time with a rising star in the cricket world, Bashir Walters. Bashy boy, Bashy, Bashox are just a few of the nicknames that fast bowler Bashir Walters answers to when playing for franchise cricket team the Warriors in Port Elizabeth. To date, Bashir has played a total of 198 matches and is a specialist in the death overs, a cricketing term for crunch time. I love cricket because, because of belief. I, I mean, without belief, what do you have? I mean, I'm always willing give back. It's about giving back to the community and when I grew up I never had this in my life. I never knew about anything, any any trials or anything and um, I'm not playing cricket for me. Yes I am for me but I mean it's, it's I'm representing Port Elizabeth. I'm representing my family. I'm representing I mean the team firstly because um, and just to play for the team if, if, if I do well it's a bonus for me. But um, playing for the team, if the team wins, if I do well and the team wins, it's, I'm more happier. I feel much better. As a nationally recognized player, Bashir has had a less than typical start to his career. Playing cricket on the streets as a boy was just for fun and he never really considered the sport as a career. In high school, Bashir joined local club, the Victorians, where the seed for his love of cricket was planted. Bashir is one of those uh, youngsters that, out of a second team, he was a, a little chubby young young guy. Uh, once he, he had a hold of, 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 of the game, he, he worked hard with the help of his father. His father was quite instrumental. I was only the his bowling and batting coach. We used to open up the batting. Uh, I taught him the basics of batting, I taught him the basics of bowling. And from there, we had some provincial players that retired provincial players that we used to, I used to send him there. And uh, from there they used to, uh, they took him further into the game until he got seen by, uh, I think, Titans. Now I'm very proud of him because not only does he, does he perform in his level that he's, he's, he's at at the moment, he always has something to give back. So the result is he, he always has time when he's free to come and give some coaching for the youngsters. As you see in the background, there's youngsters there. So he always has time for the youngsters. Not many of your, your, your youngsters that goes forward actually gives back to the old clubs. And he's one of those guys, he's always there. Whether he comes and gives a t-shirt, where he comes and gives a pants, he always has, at the end of the season, he has something of trademark of where he's playing for his province, whichever, what's name he's busy with, to give back to the youngsters. So, as far as I can, the community can be very proud of him, especially in Port Elizabeth. He's always giving something back from what he's, 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 he's gained. It was not until his varsity days at the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University that Bashir discovered his true talent and passion for cricket, realizing that the sport was a viable career path for him. I know Bashir from my time at the university and his time playing here. Uh, we played together uh, at the university as well as coached him. Uh, the Muslim community in PE is quite small, um, so I know of, uh, about Bashir from the community and uh, obviously from uh, his prowess on the cricket field. Yeah, I think Bashir's stint at NMMU was uh, a really a groundbreaking one for him in terms of performance. Um, we were fortunate enough to be surrounded with really good cricketers and uh, the one thing it did bring to Bashir's game was just the professional approach to the game, uh, attention to detail and also helping him in terms of preparation and his conditioning. So I think it gave him a good platform to go on to achieve what he has achieved. 
the pictures are up in the clubhouse, so all the younger guys and the new guys that are coming on a regular basis get to see who's sort of walked the corridors before him. And obviously a lot of them are looking to emulate some of his performances. Always keeping in mind his humble beginnings, Bashir is often found coaching and mentoring young children, like himself possessing a pure love for the sport. He sees this as a way to nurture and mould the talents of potential cricket stars of tomorrow. I love giving back because, I mean, when I grew up, I never used to hear about EP trials or this trial happening. So when I see kids nowadays, and I'll try my utmost best to help them as much as possible because growing up, I wasn't introduced to that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, every event, I'll try to be there. That's why they made me the ambassador of Eastern Province of KFC Cricket. So, yeah, I mean, I just love giving back. I just think it's fair. Um, it, everything I, I've got, all the knowledge I have, I just need, I, I think it's fair that, to be passed on to the younger generation. Quite involved in his community things, uh, religiously. Uh, he'll go to our religious things. His family, his kid, ah, he's always there with his kid. Uh, he'll organize tickets for, the, uh, for some of the guys at the club. Um, and like I say, he'll always give time. I would like to play South Africa one day. My dreams are still there, that's my goal. Um, but I also, what I've thought, instead of saying my goal is to play for South Africa, I'm striving for consistency. Because I think that's the most difficult thing to do these days, is to be consistent. So if I'm consistent, then I will get into the SCT. So I try to take it one step back and, and work on consistency, and then it will take from there. Bowling at the death is Bashir's area of expertise. It requires mental agility and faith in one's ability to achieve under pressure, a testament to his talent and his sportsmanship. Always up for healthy competition, Bashir believes that his best is yet to come. Sports truly inspires and unites us as a country, but we still have a long way to go. However, I am proudly behind our teams. Next up is our books, tech and app segment. Journeys of Binta Batuti, meaning The Journey of Somebody by Zuleka Mayat, is a book full of tantalizing recipes packed with authentic experiences. From traditional meals to international influences, the journey unfolds Zuleka's cultural and global experiences from as far as Tashkent, Russia, Canada and Mecca. The book has received rave reviews as this culinary expert shares her travels and tastes with us. Rewire Habit and Goal Tracker is a powerful Android app that helps you to keep track of your daily habits and routines. Simply plot the good habits you wish to build and the bad ones you wish to kick. Receive notifications whenever you need to do something important. Measure your progress and use the app to check yourself when you falter. Building good habits should be part of your daily life and this app certainly makes it that much easier. Miswak is a traditional and natural alternative to the toothbrush. It is mentioned in Hadith that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, recommended the use of the miswak for dental hygiene. This naturally created toothbrush made out of the Salvadora Paseca tree contains essential oils within the wood that naturally fight plaque and protect your teeth. The miswak is known to produce saliva that fights tooth decay and also prevents bad breath and mouth ulcers. This new technology has created a useful form in which to use the Miswak branch as an everyday toothbrush with amazing benefits. If you have any ideas for our show, please feel free to send us an email or get hold of us via Facebook. Details on screen. This week is Water Week and much emphasis has been placed on not only the drought that we've experienced, but conservation too. We took our cameras to the Kingdom of KwaZulu-Natal for this week's story. The conservation and preservation of our water supply has become imperative. Numerous programs are being put in place by both civil society and government to ensure we have good, clean and constant supply of water. Drought has devastated certain areas in the country and the citizens have rallied to help each other. Specifically in KZN, 
we are going through a period of drought presently. Uh, these are, this is the effect of El Nino, the El Nino phenomenon, and where you have very hot days, um, below average rainfall in some areas, and in other areas, extreme uh, rainfall. So, yeah, we're going through a drought at the moment, and uh, people just need to be aware of uh, the consequences of this. Water is a finite resource, and it is for this reason that the, the stakeholders in the water industry um, and government, of course, are uh, working together to actually, uh, for working together, you know, to get projects underway in that we make this resource a sustainable one. Um, you know, we, we in the water industry are working very, very hard to try and get all projects off the ground and so that we can impound as much of this resource as possible so for future generations we have, uh, uh, we, we have a sustainable source of uh, water. Many South Africans grow up without water around them and often have to walk long distances to get their daily supply. Bekum Bambo was one of those people, and this acted as a motivation for his own career path. Uh, when I was young, uh, I started to notice that was, water was a scarce resource, specifically from where I grew up. Uh, what then happened that uh, we mainly used uh, water, which was uh, uh, rainwater harvesting. So we then, I then started to see that it's one of the scarce uh, uh, resource. Then I had uh, done my studies uh, of civil engineering, which then led me to be a part of the people who can contribute. But after 1994, it was clear that uh, water was then, in terms of government, government wanted everybody else to actually then start getting water, so I started to have interest from that time. We undergone certain studies, which uh, those studies actually then reflected some of the uh, uh, great areas which we were losing water. So currently we are running some projects where we are taking out the old pipes and putting the new ones because the water loss was seen to be sitting above 50%. With water being a scarce resource, a lot of investment goes into ensuring that citizens save water. At a later stage, if communities don't save water, government will be forced to impose strict restrictions. It is estimated that 36% of drinking water is being lost to leaking pipes, and the local municipality is one of many others who are focusing on ways and means to curb this. Uh, what it has done for now is that uh, in terms of our bulk supply is then reducing. You will notice that it's during drought times. So what then happens is that we need to save water for actually uh, for, uh, for everyone. So we have seen that drastically it's, it's, it's helping towards the drought and it's actually helping in terms of conserving the quantity, the, the quantity of water that is required for all our communities. Uh, we are in the area called Merivale. Uh, Merivale is one of the areas which we notice that through our studies we're losing more than 50 percent uh, in terms of water loss. So what we are actually doing now, we, we, we then putting about more than 30 kilometers of pipe, as you can see, uh, uh, taking out the old asbestos cement pipe and putting in the new ones and also changing the meter because the meters, some of the meters were faulty. It's going to help because what then happens is that all the water that we are actually then be losing is going to now be able to be used by some of the people. And again, in terms of the government, we'll be saving some funds because what is happening in the entire area, country, you'll notice that most of the municipalities it is, this is what they need to start doing now, replacing all asbestos cement pipes so that we can then get into a new uh, system. One is important because one, in terms of the financial capacity, if then we lose the water, remember the water has been treated and we paid for, for the bulk supplier. So basically we are able then to save and then use those savings to actually then put more projects for the, for, for, for the other one. But apart from that, it's helping the government to achieve its goal to have all its citizens having water supply and adequate water supply rather than some areas having and some areas don't. Initiatives such as Operation Hydrate has gone some way in bringing awareness to the problem of water in South Africa. But it will take much more than just this to ensure our future water security. The, the responsibility of water conservation is for all people of this country. And every single person needs to take responsibility for the, amounts of, for the amount of water that we have. And, uh, to ensure that we have this in the future, the leaks, um, 
techniques, the, the system uh, displacement program, these all need to be worked on uh, fast and efficiently so that we can get uh, have this resource available to us for the future. Water is a gift from Allah and as Muslims we need to ensure that it is not abused. There are many ways to stem the tide of losing our water supply and we need to be at the forefront of the campaign to do this. It's not only a religious duty to conserve water but a moral one. We are tasked with ensuring that our children and their children have access to water. Our monthly events calendar is always packed with the most hip and happening things in our neighborhood. Let's see what next month has in store. The Voice of the Cape in conjunction with Gift of the Givers Foundation present the Golden Hour Luncheon focusing on District 6, 50 years down memory lane. Worcester Muslim Jamaa will be presenting its annual Easter Bazaar on Monday, 28th March at the Masjid Complex, Durban Street, Worcester. The event will host an array of goodies from cake sales to food vendors, offering sweet and savory treats. Durbanville Islamic Society will be having their very first golf day on the 17th of April, 2016 at the Boshenmere Golf Estate. For more information about this event, please contact Zafir Sattar on the information on the screen. 350 rand per player includes green fees and prizes. In light of the challenges faced by our youth, the youth wing of Darul Islam Center, Youth of the Ummah initiated Daughters of the Ummah project, especially for our sisters and some of the challenges they face. Daughters of the Ummah is a youth female-only enterprise fully managed and coordinated by the youth of the Darul Islam Center. Daughters of the Ummah has a team of dedicated and committed sisters providing life skills and guidance to the Ummah at large. The Imam Development Project and Al Kothar Institute South Africa present a spiritually uplifting opportunity to reconnect you with yourself, your family, the Ummah and Allah. Join us at the foothills of the Drakensberg with breathtaking views of the amphitheater to revitalize your connection with Allah through Salah, Dhikr and reminders of Allah's majesty. Irtika magazine in association with Constitution Hill presents Unveiling the Hijabi, an exhibition aimed at celebrating Muslim women with a voice. Unveiling the Hijabi commemorates the life of renowned anti-apartheid activist Fatima Mir, who whilst jailed spent time expressing herself through paintings. April in South Africa, which has been dubbed Freedom Month, aims to break barriers and unify people of varying backgrounds. While I love all that we do on the show, the travel segment is most definitely my favorite. I do confess, however, that I'm slightly jealous of the team who get to experience more of our beautiful country. But we do get to share in this from the comfort of our homes. Let's explore more of the Western Cape. Forty kilometers outside of Cape Town city centre lies the ever-popular Monkey Town, a place where humans can interact with these amazing creatures. This is a Monkey Town. You are going to see 250 monkeys. We are going to see 28 different types of monkeys. Not only monkeys, we have apes, which is uh, chimpanzees and gibbons. We also have few other animals like antelopes, few species of birds, emus, we have meerkats and caracals, so there is a lot to see. The park is well tended and has a variety of different primates. Monkeys are not only fascinating but fun and extremely clever animals. A visit here is bound to excite as well as educate. 
As you enter Monkey Town, you will see monkeys that are called spider monkeys. But there is a famous monkey called Luke. So whenever we take the guest around, he's always with. So we also have velvet monkey, we have white-faced suckies, and then we have very, very intelligent monkeys that are called capuchins. And yeah, we do have ring-tailed lim ring limos, the ones from Madagascar, like King Julia. A great cup of coffee goes hand in hand with a good tasting meal, and there are few places that can claim both. This week's featured meal is not only tasty and pretty, but scrumptiously delicious. The idea initially started with the love of coffee and making coffee, and that's where it all started and stemmed from. It started off as a mobile solution, and initially that's what I had, and I started with a mobile. And from there, the idea just grew uh, into having a little cafe uh, to do what I do every day, which is making coffee. Ideally, that's what I'd love to do, is just make coffee every single day, all day long. As part of its food philosophy, the owner of this restaurant is intent on making not only a good meal, but an affordable one too. Our French toast, bacon, mascarpone, maple syrup and banana, that would be my favourite of favourites and I think everyone should try that. It is a breakfast item, but it's a kind of a dessert breakfast item. Whether you're in a hurry or looking for a place to just take a load off, this is definitely the place to do it. The menu offers delectable treats that taste as good as they look. We do what we do well, the vibe, everything about us. We know every single person that walks in here, we know their names, we greet them by name, people like sitting here. Um, it's just a nice place to be and the food is excellent, so is the coffee. If you're in the mood for an adrenaline full day, then Blue Rock Resort is just the place. Choose from an array of activities that are sure to get your heart pumping. There's various things we do here, starting from uh, cable skiing, which is water skiing, wakeboarding or kneeboarding behind, on a cable instead of behind a boat. Um, we also have paintball, 400 meter foofy slide ride, rock jumping, swimming, beach volleyball, stand up paddle boarding. This is ideal for team building exercises or company functions, birthday parties as well as bachelor parties. The resort is situated in an old unused quarry that used to supply most of the material that built Cape Town's highways and roads. New management saw an opportunity to turn it into an adventure center and the rest, as they say, is history. It used to be a quarry uh, back in the 1960s, 1964 if I'm correct, um, and the actual stone called Blue Rock got dug out. That's where the name Blue Rock Resort comes from as well. Um, the rocks got used for the um, trail, uh, the, sorry, the train uh, in between the rails. During summer, it's one of the most popular places and visitors are encouraged to come early. Everything needed for a day on the water can be hired or bring your own gear and get ready to get wet. We've come a long way since our very first episode about 10 years ago and we will continue to bring entertainment and thought-provoking stories. You, our audience, are what makes our show great and we'd love to hear from you. So contact us. Don't forget, episodes are uploaded to YouTube, so let your family and friends all over the world know. And search for Anur the Light. From me, Mario Mokwanda, Salang Hantle, Assalamu Alaikum. Mm -hmm.